Today is a good day. I mean, last week was awesome. Yeah. Who was blessed last week? Woo! Glory to God. Did, did you put, book, book your first, first class ticket on a plane to heaven? Did you? Well, show me, show me your ticket number. It's with angels. <laughs> last week, we decided to book for our first class tickets to heaven. Yeah. I, on a private jet. Yeah. So we asked everybody to bring their ticket now so we can stop, stop up approval. Hey, yeah. eh? You understand? God is a good God. <laughs> Shall we pray? Father, Lord, we thank you. Oh, bless you, sir. One million pounds for all of us. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Stamp of approval. Thank you, sir. Bless you. <laughs> God is a good God, eh? Yeah. <laughs> One million pounds out, the tango. Please, say it. It is here. When we finish, come and touch it too. Yeah, yeah. Or you, 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 can, you can even take picture and keep it on your phone. Because you are blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I will pray. Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice in the glad in it. We thank you, King of Kings. That is a good day to be alive, to come under the conscience of God in Jesus' name, to listen to your word of God. We pray that every word that comes from God will be from the God. The God that knows no man, the God that's the beginning, the God that's a faithful God, the God that we believe in, that does everything on our behalf, the spiritual world, the God that whatever we hear will make it manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. Wherever we go, Lord, let our mark in our lives. Be a manifestation of the God that we serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So uh, our topic is a heaven worth striving for. That's why I said, have you booked your ticket to heaven? A heaven worth striving for. Is it worth to strive for heaven? Most Christians, we have to ask all these questions so that we know that the God we serve is a good God. We know that when we leave this planet, we are going to a better place. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a continuation from last week's sermon where we looked at what the kingdom of God is like. So last week we had a sermon looking at what the kingdom of God was like. And it was a parable of the vineyard workers in Matthew 20, 1 to 16 in response to Peter's question. So Peter asked Jesus in Matthew 19, 27, he, he, he said to Jesus, Before we have, we have given all and followed you, what shall we have therefore? And it's a good question, isn't it? You have given your all. You have left home. You have given everything to follow Christ. And now you have to ask Christ, what is in for me? Is that not so? It's a good question. I'm following you, but at the end, what am I getting? So this was what Peter asked Jesus Christ. So last week, we looked at the question, and then let's, let's listen to what Jesus said to him. So Jesus' answer to Peter was, he said, Verily I say unto you, that you which you followed me, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, the Son of Man is Christ himself, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, hallelujah, and shall inherit everlasting Life. Saints, you are going to inherit everlasting life if you give it all to God. And he went on to say, But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. What an answer. Christ said, If you give it all to me, you have everlasting life with me in his glory in heaven. Hallelujah. That's why I say, Have you booked your ticket first class yet? Hey? Follow Jesus. Is is Piloting the plane. We, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is the air hostess. <laughs> we are the passengers. Yes! Because, you see, at the end of your life, what do you strive for? Do you think you wake up one day, you are born, 75, you die, and then that's it? Is that so? No. You are born for a purpose. And then when you finish, you end up in His glory for a purpose. Because He needs you and I to be with Him. In heaven. That is why you have to strive for heaven. Is heaven worth striving for? Yes, saint, it is. Because the God that we serve, He is the only God that He will give us a resting place. I cannot imagine when you leave your soul, when your soul leaves your body and you end up in the pit of hell. No. We do not even rest, rest that on our worst enemy. Hallelujah. Saints of God, heaven is going to be glorious. 
Say to your neighbor, I've already booked my ticket. I've already booked my ticket. I have packed my suitcases. Hallelujah, ah, come on, come on, say it. You have, I mean, look, when you are traveling, look at the expectation, the excitement you have to pack your suitcases. You go to the airport and you remember you left your, your iPad, your phone. You are panicking. Come on, this is happening. <laughs> it's wonderful. Are you not excited to pack your suitcases? This one is not 23 kilos. Ah. Hallelujah. Unlimited kilos. Yeah. La, 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 la. Unlimited kilos. Eh? <laughs> what are you going to carry to heaven? Yeah. Everything is here. La, la, la. <laughs> carry everything to heaven because you see, he says, Look, I'm going to a prepared place for my, my, my father's house. There's what? Yeah. Many mansions. What are you afraid of? Do not limit God. Do not put him in a box where we define him by the side of the box. No. Hey, brother, 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 well done. Thank you. God is a good God. We give him glory. Hallelujah. Uh, may I ask someone to read Revelation 21, 18 to 27 for us, please? Revelation 21, 18 to 27. The wall was made of jasper. Yes. And the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones inlaid with twelve precious stones. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacket, the twelfth amethyst. Amen. Twelve gates were made of pearls. Hallelujah. Each gate from a single pearl. And the main gate was pure gold as clear as glass. I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Amen. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God Hallelujah. illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. Amen. The nations will walk in its light. And the kings of the world will, will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed Amen. at the end of the day, because there is no night there. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil. Amen. Nothing evil. Amen. Nothing evil Amen. will be allowed to enter. Nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen! Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen! I pray and declare that your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen! Please, this week, spend time and read the meditation of Revelation 21, 1 to 27. This is a glimpse of your future, of heaven. Okay? When you read this, then you understand the reason why you are giving your all to Christ. Because at the end of the day, when you work in a full-time job and you do not get paid at the end of the month, are you happy? No. So likewise, Christ, we're working in this kingdom. We need to be paid by going what? To heaven. To also experience the new heaven and the new earth. Hallelujah. So the most important, important fact about heaven is that it will become more glorious than anything you can imagine. Saints. Heaven is going to be so glorious that what, what, what you perceive and what you imagine is going to be limited to your own imagination. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be nice. It's going to be precious. When God gave John Apostle a glimpse of Jesus in his heavenly glory, John was so overwhelmed that he fell down on the ground. Christ, when you see him, I mean, the, the, the atmosphere becomes so overwhelmed that you, your body shivers. He fell, silent, fell on his face on the ground. Because the Spirit of God was next to John. John was exiled in the island of Patmos. So he said, when I saw him, I fell at, at his feet as dead. When he saw Christ, he fell at his feet as dead. Say, so when we see Christ, we're going to fall on our feet as dead. And he, he said, he laid his right hand upon me. Say not to me, fear not, I am the first and the last. Saints, God is going to lay his right hand upon you. Amen. Amen. And he's going to say, I am the first and the last. Fear not, because he is with you. Whatever you do, he's next to you. Saints, do not be afraid. 
The enemy is a liar. He put fear in us. They say fear is false evidence appearing real. It's false. The evidence that Satan is giving to you is false. False evidence appearing real. It's not real. That's why Christ said, fear not, because he knows that the enemy cannot touch you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The enemy needs to go to Christ and ask permission to touch you. Did you know that? He cannot on his will, free will touch you. No, because you are precious to God. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the God that you and I will serve. Yes. The God who came on the cross to die for us. He was smitten, beaten, kicked, abused, insulted, punched, right? spit on him. Pierce him with the with the with with the, with the, with the arrow. He asked for, 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 for water. They gave him vinegar. Come on. This is the Christ you and I will serve saints. He died for you because of the love he loves the kind of The love is God for you. So when you are serving Christ, give it your all. Do not be like the church in um, um like Laodicea, the lukewarm church. No. Whether you are in or you are out, that's the God that we serve. Amen. He's not looking for people who take it today and then tomorrow. No, 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 no. He wants you to go forward and conquer because he's behind you. And he's, he's ahead of you. He will go and make way for you. So by the time you get there, everything is in place for you. Saints. He said, look, I'm going to heaven. He told the disciples when they saw him go to heaven. I'm going to pray, pray for you. I was sent. A comforter to come. Say, we have a comforter. Hallelujah. Amen. When we were praying this morning, the comforter was here. Hallelujah. Did you feel it? Amen. He was here. Every time we pray 10 to 10, 10 we feel it. The, 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 the energy that is in this place is awesome. Say it. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. So one reason heaven is glorious is because it is absolutely perfect. It's perfection. Perfect. Do you know what God says? Perfect. Perfect means there's, there's, there's nothing wrong. You and human beings, we cannot be perfect because we are number six. Is that the, 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 the number of man? We cannot be perfect. But the perfect number is one number. Seven. Hallelujah. That's what heaven is perfect. Perfection. Christ is number seven. Saints, we have to glorify Christ. Hallelujah. So heaven is perfect. And he said, in this present world, we are surrounded by sin and decay and death. Wherever we see war, Hunger, poverty. But it will not be true in heaven. This world is also played by violence and wars and natural disasters, but again, it will not be true in heaven. The Bible says, Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Amen. In heaven, nations will just. God will disarm them, hallelujah. You know, you take it there. And he said in Micah, He said, He shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their sword into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up their sword against nations, neither shall they learn of war anymore. So Christ is saying, your war, your, your weapon that you use to, to, go, to go to war, you turn it into what? Farming tools. <laughs> Hallelujah. You turn it into plows, because there will be no need for war. Because he will bring his peace upon the people. Saints. The Christ we serve is the only Christ to redemption. There's no one to redemption apart from him. And you are privileged to be sat here today. Hallelujah. Amen. So heaven is glorious most of, of, of it because it's the dwelling place of God. We can barely imagine this, but it's true. The Bible says, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. What a statement. He says that you and I, God will dwell with us in heaven. John went on to say, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Hallelujah. Say, say to someone, God is my God. God is my God. God is my God. He's saying, John is saying, this is what God told him. Hey, God is saying this to you. So will heaven be like this world? The Bible says that in some ways it will be. Why? Because it says that we will not feel like strangers. Right. Hallelujah. We will, <laughs> we will not feel like strangers. We will see each other as we've known ourselves for eternity. Hallelujah. 
because of their love. You know when you have love for somebody, it's as if you know the person for a long time. This is not a love, I mean, between husband and wife. You know, some, sometimes you meet somebody from somewhere, and you are, you are so compassionate. The love is in the heart that you, you do anything for that person. Have, have, you, have you heard that, that love before? Uh -huh. the, the person hasn't done anything for you. You just met that person, but it, it, your, your heart is pounding to just, just push. It's connection. Thank you, good words. So there's, there's a connection, isn't it? That's the love that is saying we have. Heaven is a wonderful place to be. So why would anyone not want to go there? Why would they not want to go to heaven? Have you asked yourself? <laughs> if if Baptists believe that people, some people these days they will denounce Christ and follow other gods and miss heaven. Hallelujah. But saints, you are not missing heaven. Amen. Amen. Because your 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 reservation is your seat in heaven is reserved. Your name. You see, God said, look. I will mark your forehead with my name in Revelation. Yeah. He will mark you. So when you go, your seat is already reserved. Yeah. Hey, Auntie Shami, I'm going to take your seat in heaven. No. You... <laughs> she says, no way. Because her seat is reserved for her, isn't it? Yeah. Mama Pearlin, her seat is reserved for her. Pastor yeah. Joe, your seat is reserved. Yeah. Uh, Cedric, your seat is reserved. Jean, your seat is reserved. Nobody's going to take your seat. Sarah, yours is reserved. Yeah. Hey. Your seat is reserved. And all of us are seats are reserved in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> no one's going to find your seats. <laughs> because your name is already on that seat. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, you know when, when 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 you go to let's say a function and they, they have reservation at the front of your seat. How do you feel when they say, Oh, that's your name is on that? How do you feel? Yeah. You feel important, isn't it? Yeah. And then and then sometimes maybe you walk in late and then they have to walk you through the whole hall. <laughs> <laughs> this is heaven. When I say, look, as we come here, come, my daughter, this is your seat. And he's going to walk you through the thing in heaven. See what? <laughs> God is a good God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we serve a good God. Amen. <laughs> so the greatest thing about heaven is that you can go there. But only one thing will keep you out of heaven. There's a condition, and that is sin. Sin. But Christ Jesus came to open the door of heaven for you and I. And he did this by taking upon himself the judgment that we deserve. Why not put your faith and trust in him today? It's simple. He said, no, you want to come to me? Accept me in your heart that I am the Christ. I, I was killed and I rose up on the third day. And believe. That's all. It's easy. I mean, I was going through Leviticus and um, Genesis and um, all those Old Testaments. Um, ritual they had to do for them to go to the glory place of God. It was immense. Some of them you have to shave your head. Some of them you have to kill the bull and then you drain the blood and you keep it there somewhere for seven days. You do not touch it. The conditions were so hidden. I'm thinking, how were people able to keep this? But Christ came for us to take away all these conditions. So I say, you and I, you can come to Christ, God, freely, Amen. with nothing at all. All you need to do is what? Accept me as your Lord and say, that is all. It's not easy to go to. Imagine you are writing an examination. Hey, you write an examination. They say, look, it's a high, high-end exam. You want to do your PhD. The question is very tough. It's challenging. But at the end, they give you a simple answer to pass everything. Would you take that simple answer? Of course. You do not have to do all the calculation, all this calculation. Just take the simple answer and present as your, your is that thesis, they call it thesis, so your final report. Okay. You, dissertation, thank you. Use that um, formula as your dissertation. Would you not take that formula? Yeah. Of course. That's the formula for you from Christ. He said, look, all this the dissertation from the PhD, from the Old Testament um, laws, everything is off. Take this simple formula, which is what? One plus one equals two. <laughs> Amen. This is Christ. When you accept him, you are, you, you are delivered. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how can, you know, how, how can you know for sure that you go to heaven? So maybe you are wondering, will you go to heaven? And it's a good worry. Maybe you are thinking, my sin will keep me out. These questions will help you on people, even without the added stress of life. 
They are thinking, oh, would my life take me to heaven? And I've asked these questions a long time ago when I was in the world. Because I, I was afraid to die. Because <laughs> when you're in the world, you're always afraid to die. But when you come to Christ, it's a privilege to die. Yeah. Hallelujah. It says to die is to gain because you know where you are going. The Bible says you can know for sure that you'll be with God if you die. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's all. That is all. Yeah. How simple is this? This, this is the, the, the simplest equation for your PhD thesis. If you confess with your mouth that Christ is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Death! Is the door that must be walked through in order to get to your real home. What a statement. This one, most people do not like it. Most people do not like it. Because we all, we are all afraid to die, isn't it? I'm number one, I mean, believe me. <laughs> we are all afraid of that. And it's not because we do not know where we are going. We know that as a saint of God, we go straight to heaven. But it is the the the, the 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 family members you leave behind, the fear of the unknown, that the people you, you live in have you provided enough for them? That is the fear. That is why I say most saints we are afraid to die. Because we are saying if I go today, what are my kids going to do? Where are my kids going to live? Have I prepared enough for them when I'm not around? That's the result also. That is the only fear. But the fear of dying, you should embrace it. So death is the only door that can take you to heaven. Many people have a fear of dying because they do not know what is in store for them. Because they have no idea what is on the other side of the equation. They want to get to heaven but do not know if they've done enough good things in life to want their place. They feel like there's no way of going until they die and their talents are counted. And this opinion admit that they do not believe in God or in heaven and hell. And in their view, there's nothing on the other side of the final breath. You live and then you die. Wow. Wow. These days, the secular world are telling kids that you can become what you want to become. You can today I can become Angela. It's my choice. Tomorrow I can become Elizabeth. Next day, I can become whatever I want to become. The secular world is pumping the next generation with ideas that are not from the Bible. Anything that is not from the Bible, it is not of God. Hallelujah, saints. Amen. It is not. We have to pray for the next generation that the Spirit of God will be with them and come around them and help them. Because what is going on in the school system, when you look at their curriculum, God help us. Amen. Hallelujah. God help us. But we're in good hands. We're in good hands. Saints, if you hold one of these views, it makes complete sense that you are afraid of dying if you cannot say with say that you know heaven is away. Heaven away it probably doesn't. If that describes you, please hear what I have to say next. Rather than fearing death, consider it your friend. Consider death your friend. Okay, I'm going to share with you something. Since Christ has conquered death, it is now subservient to him. It means that death serves Christ. He's got command over death. Death has lost its sting. When he died, he said, All oh, death, where is your sin? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For those who call on the name of Jesus as Savior and Lord, death is now the friend that opens the door and introduces you to eternity with Jesus in heaven. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, are many mansions. Hey, take your key to your father's house because there are many mansions. Yeah. Hey, do you want a mansion with what? Helipad, uh, <laughs> swimming pool, uh, gym? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Yeah. What's... Yeah. Whatever you want is there. Thank you, thank you, brother. Whatever you want is there. Yeah. See, it's, it's prepared that there are many mansions in heaven. You. Choose your pick. Imagine, for example, somebody somewhere tells you a long time ago that you are less in line to be the king or the queen of England. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, this, this is earthly, this is a physical realm. Imagine somebody tells you your future 
is to be the next king or queen of England. What are you going to do in preparation? Hallelujah. But guess what? God is saying your future is what? In my kingdom. That is that kingdom not better than the, 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 the monarchy? Yes. Come on. Yes. Is that kingdom not better than everything on this on this place or on, on this place of the earth? Yes. So what are you doing in preparation to enter that kingdom? Are you going to give it your all? Amen, sir. Amen. The kingdom of this earth, imagine the, 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 the process you have to go through to become a king or queen. The attire you have to wear, the way you speak, the way you, you shake hands, hey, what you eat. Before the media comes to interview you, what, what they prep you, what to say. This is on this planet where God says everything is going to go down to dust. But in heaven, nothing is going to go down to dust. He's going to preserve it for you. What preparation are you putting in place? What, how are you preparing yourself? Look at when they put um, King Charles on. Look at the number of people that were at Buckingham Palace. And the funny thing is they read a decree. And one thing that picked my ear and I was laughing, I said, no, no, this is not me. He said, look, we have chosen King Charles to rule over us. This is the land. But in my world, no one rules over me apart from Christ. Saints, in my world, in my Bible, no one rules over me apart from Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's the heaven that you and I, we have to be preparing for. Amen. 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 In heaven, those saved by God will have new glorified bodies without the case of sin. So when, when, when you go to heaven, your body is going to be changed into a glorified body. That is why when the Spirit of God comes here, you'll be able to absorb the energy. God, the Spirit of God is so powerful that when you sing with the wind naked eye, you will die instantly. Because your body is not glorified enough to absorb all the, the energy is so intense that you have to hide your, your face. Otherwise, you just explode. But he said, when you get to heaven, I'll give you a new glorified body. So your body, my spirit and your spirit, will be able to merge and I'll come in the midst of you and serve you. Hallelujah. What a beautiful scene. Saints, God is going to sit next to you and ask you, my child, what shall I do for you? Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What shall I do for you? What I want to say to God? What, what I want to ask God? Ooh. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, <laughs> there will be no blind, deaf, or lame in heaven. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap up as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb say, Amen. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Who shall change your bad body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Amen. Although Jesus builds houses in heaven, the Bible also says that those saved will also build their own house. I didn't know. He says that those who are saved will also will build their own house in heaven. See you. I'll, I'll give you a random way. Amen. And you, you will inhabit them as well as plant and eat from your vineyard in heaven. In Isaiah 65, 21. I didn't know this. Isaiah, please put it and check in your Bible. Isaiah 65, 21. It says, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Amen. Yes. God is a good God. Isaiah is saying that when you get to heaven, you will build your own houses. Hallelujah. What plans do you have for the architect of Christ? Hey, do, you, do you have a six-bedroom plan? Uh, a skyscraper, a tower, a council flat, <laughs> or a bungalow. Hey, you build your house. Hallelujah. Most importantly, God will be in heaven and he wants to be your friend. Wow. He wants to be your father and he wants to be your friend. He wants to dwell with you and wipe away all your tears. And he said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. From the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I just saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. 
and a new thing will begin in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, um, like I said, make Revelation 21, 1 to 27 your scripture for this week. And it gives a vivid description of heaven. Revelation 21, 1 to 27. Hallelujah. God is a good God. God is a good God. So how do you enter heaven? Salvation is free. Your salvation depends on what Christ has done for you. Not on what you do for him. It isn't your hold on God that saves you. It is the hold on you. It is the hold of God on your life that saves you. Saints. Salvation, the best is free. There's no attachment to salvation. What <laughs> What a word. Salvation is what? Say to your neighbor, salvation is free. God puts no price tag on the gift of salvation. But like any other gift, salvation is in yours until you reach out and accept it. Salvation cannot be earned. In Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, it says, For by grace we are saved through faith. Not for ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God's gift was sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. God's grace covers our sin. You can be a loving person, a good person, and even a volunteer of the year, but you'll never be good enough. We're all born with a sinful nature. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus' sacrifice was the only solution to wipe our sins away so we can be in heaven with the Holy God. This doesn't mean that we never need to ask God for forgiveness. We have to ask Him constantly because we sin every single day. We need to and go directly to Jesus Christ in prayer. Yes. Consult Christ in prayer. Asking God to go forgive you is wise. And it's a practice you always have to try and follow in your life. Christ is freedom. Say to your neighbor, Christ is freedom. Christ is freedom. Christ is freedom. Imagine they give you the freedom to travel around the world without paying anything. Uh, this is Christ for you. He's free. He's free. You can take him wherever you want free without paying a penny. You can carry him in, in your bag, on your phone, this is the technology, on your iPad, because you have the word of God in those devices. And he's free. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not a cleansing of the conscience that saves you. It is not the faith in Christ that saves you. A cleansed conscience is the result of having Come to the right relationship with God. Ask God's Son, Jesus Christ, to come and live in your heart today, saints. You must individually receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You and you alone in the Christ arena of your heart will have to make that decision. If you are searching for forgiveness and for peace with God, you can walk through these steps and use this as a prayer guide. Number one, admit that you are a sinner. Number two, return Turn up, repent, turn away from your sin and let go of your past sin. Number three, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and ask Jesus Christ into your heart and your life. Saints, as I bring today's message to a closing, it is very, very important that we boldly, if we haven't, accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because that's the only thing you and I we can do say and accept to make it to heaven. There's nothing to it. And it's as simple as declaring and believing that Christ died for you, rose up on the third day, and you take him as your Lord and personal Savior. I know most of us here, we've already dedicated our lives to Christ. But if you will, and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, or if you want to, it's your first time to Accept Christ in your life. This is your best opportunity. Because you never know when your last candle, the, the, the light will dim. He spoke with a friend of his early in the morning. Healthy man, bubbly man, strong man. After him, he got a call from a number, unknown number, saying, Unfortunately, your friend just passed. So, wow. He spoke with him a few hours ago in the morning. He was sat in the car going to visit somebody. Gone. Heart attack. Saints, you never know when you'll 
you, you laugh your last laugh. You have your last meal. You enjoy the presence of saints like today. Very important. So if you can, if you boldly want to give your life to Christ, this is your precise an obstacle. Please, you can just boldly walk straight. We pray with God. We will pray with you. Or if you want to dedicate your life to Christ, this is your best chance. Do not let this opportunity go past. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Or if you could, could you please um, repeat this after me? Lord Jesus, I believe you came to die on the cross for my sins. And resurrected on the third day. I repent of my sins and ask for, for your forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Guide my life and help me do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.